Dave Filoni and Kathleen Kennedy probably saw how bad this episode was, this finale was, and like, oh man, we need to save this, just shove Anakin Skywalker there at the end, and everybody will eat it up, it'll be a great episode, and the shills mostly are the ones that are going to eat this up and give it a 10 out of 10, but another issue here is like, why is he there, why haven't we seen anything in Disney Star Wars now post Return of the Jedi with him showing up to his son Luke Skywalker, why is he just so focused on Ahsoka, why is Anakin Skywalker so focused on Ahsoka? Ahsoka. Dave Filoni's failure is complete in this finale episode of the Ahsoka show or also known as the Sabine show and enter the Sabine show another Mary Sue forces female character from Kathleen Kennedy's Lucas film. Dave Filoni told Ryan Johnson and JJ Abrams hold my beer bros I'll do you one better and lo and behold he overpowered Sabine. Filoni cannot write for shit and his mind is riddled with all this feminist propaganda that has nothing to do anywhere near Star Wars. This is Disney Star Wars at its worst, a sludge concoction of bad writing, bad characters, and crooked ideologies. Gone are the days of real Star Wars, true Star Wars. George Lucas Star Wars and Star Wars really ended back in 2005 with Revenge of the Sith. They made Thrawn useless, he's one of the dumbest characters here, they give him just bad dialogue comebacks to try to explain his incompetence with himself and the characters and allies that he surrounds himself with and this is definitely not EU Thrawn, this is like a very dumb numbskull cartoon version of him. Usually my review consists of good and bad points but unfortunately this episode lacks any good Star Wars. This beginning scene with Morgan Elspeth becoming a night sister, full night sister witch, just takes its sweet time. Lots of slow pacing, trying to be moody and trying to add tension where there really isn't. This for me doesn't really feel like Star Wars. I know the night sisters, the witches of Dathomir, originated in the ODU, but I think Dave Filoni's interpretation here, especially in live action form, uh, just doesn't really come off as something authentic. Star Wars universe galaxy. Even though I guess he's trying to set up this whole dumb idea that it, they're from another galaxy. It just doesn't make any sense. He could have explored the unknown regions instead. And nobody cares about Morgan Elspeth. This lady is so boring. Her character. This is one of the worst characters in Disney Star Wars. This scene like many others in this episode. And even other episodes before the finale. There's just a lot more awkward dialogue. Slow pacing scenes here. That just reveals a lot of bad writing. And just a lot of bad direction in giving the actors good moments with more nuance and good acting uh, moments as well. It feels like Filoni is trying to show some character development here when if anything there really is nothing of that here. What this shows to me right here is the writer's lack of good characterization, good dialogue, good exposition well told, wit, humor, and effective dramatic beats. In the moment when the TIE Fighters arrive to ambush them, how is it that these TIE Fighters or these TIE Fighter pilots are so incompetent that they cannot destroy this ship that is slowly moving or at least mostly stationary and just take the whole ship out i'm pretty sure its shields are not at full power they could destroy it and it just shows the incompetence of these tie fighter pilots but it's just more plot armor to try to save the heroes and it doesn't help because there's a lot of moments in this episode in this whole entire show where you just don't feel any tension you're not afraid that these characters are going to die it never feels like they're really in danger you just throw stuff at them and they escape with a lot of bad writing and in this moment right here where the tie fighters are flying right towards the jedi aircraft why is a tie fighter pilot going like this instead of keeping his hands on the ship's controls and maneuvering away from the jedi cruiser it just doesn't make any sense it's really dumb and it also takes away from the danger that they're facing right here sure it destroys their aircraft but it's just moments like this that they can make even better and just have more impact and be more memorable but they just the Dave Filoni cannot do uh, space combat or spacecraft combat here in his own Star Wars show. Got him. This was just a cringe moment where the writers were trying to make Sabine seem cool. No. 
I feel like a lot of stuff in this show with the actress playing Sabine, she just doesn't look like she's interested. She looks like she's irritated a lot of the times. The actress doesn't look like she's enjoying being there, doing this role. It probably doesn't help that Dave Filoni is directing her and the guy doesn't know what he's doing. And she's like, oh, I don't know what the heck I'm doing here. What does this guy want me to do? How does he want my character to sound, be like? What kind of personality do I should I have? There is no charisma or personality. And this character just ruins this show. The writers always have to give Thrawn some bad comeback line to explain his failure and incompetence and he fails a lot in this show. If a Star Destroyer is firing its turbo lasers at the ground below it to these small three figures there, it should incinerate the whole ground. It should be like a Vietnam napalm explosion but 10 times bigger. It's really dumb how you have these explosions. They're fairly big for the characters there in person but they're actually very small. It should just obliterate the whole area and these characters should be dead these are not supposed to be blaster bolts coming from a, a rifle or a blaster gun it sh these are turbo lasers it should incinerate the whole ground and everything should catch on fire these star destroyers in the eu destroyed cities and cut through other starships in space battles you're telling me that it, that this is the best they can do these characters should be dead and this is just more bad writing from filoni Zombie Stormtroopers originates from the ODU and it's a cool idea but unfortunately Filoni does not have the craft to execute this really well and there's a lot of inconsistencies in the scenes here with them. One moment they're like actual zombies moving slow, moaning and everything like that. They have that zombie type of hive mind mentality and another moment you see them kind of like holding their blaster rifles correctly and firing at Ahsoka and crew. It just does, it, there's a lot of inconsistencies there and he doesn't have the craft, the filmmaking craft for to do more interesting editing and more interesting characterizations here and more interesting camera work as well. Who cares about this character and whatever she wants and whatever they're trying to do with her? Like it just who cares about this character? It's a really bad character. Morgan Elspeth and Ahsoka must be the most uninteresting rivalry ever in Star Wars. Who cares about Morgan Elspeth and that generic earthly name of hers? It's two boring, bland, unnatural looking, fighting, middle-aged women here dueling with lightsabers. This must be Kathleen Kennedy's wet dream right here. And I'm sorry, and I know a lot of people agree, Rosario Dawson wielding lightsabers and with this choreography and fighting, I, she just doesn't convince me as a good lightsaber combat, force wielder, Jedi, whatever. It, it probably doesn't even have to do with Rosario Dawson. It probably has to do a lot with the choreographers that were hired for this show. The background Jedi in the Battle of Genoesis and Attack the Clones look way better using lightsabers in Jedi combat here probably because Nick Geller was the stunt coordinator and he hired actual martial artists to play the background Jedi. Why is Ezra here fist fighting this super powerful trooper here? Why isn't he using the force? Wasn't he the one that said, oh, the force is my ally? It just doesn't make any sense. And then you have Sabine here, the part of one of the worst moments in this episode, her using the force out of nowhere because nothing has been established. She hasn't done any training. It's just really stupid. And she has to be the one that ends up saving Ezra. And in this moment right here, Ezra can't even basically save himself he needs the woman here to save him and he's so dumb trying to fist fight this stormtrooper when he could be doing all these powerful force moves on him and defeat him really easily without having to fist fight him and this has to be one of the worst most forced moments in disney star wars here nothing established ever in rebels and barely any training that she has had in this show here that she can use the force or has the force at all and this is just more disingenuous female empowerment crap sabine and ray from the sequels using the force with these and without much training for years is a middle finger and also devalues luke skywalker's arc in the original trilogy it devalues his trials, his tribulations, and also his full training with Yoda. As well as George Lucas established canon with Jedi training, which is supposed to take time and years. This is why, for example, in Attack of the Clones, Anakin couldn't defeat Count Dooku, but with a lot more training and many years later, he was able to kill him in Revenge of the Sith all because of his training. Sabine is just another overpowered Mary Sue just like Rey and this is why Disney Star Wars fails as well as many other reasons. 
So this moment's really weird because it doesn't make sense why Sabine would leave Ezra alone on that Star Destroyer with Thrawn, a battalion of stormtroopers, and these magic force wielding witches. So Morgan Elsbeth is dead and nobody really cares. Morgan is dead. She has done what was required. Thrawn receives more bad news of his incompetence and the writers just give him another bad comeback line. So right here, why is the Star Destroyer here not firing at the Jedi Cruiser? Instead, they're firing at the temple, but this Jedi Cruiser right here is basically a sitting duck. It's right below the Star Destroyer. Why don't they focus and target the Jedi Cruiser and just obliterate them? It's just a lot of plot armor here and more bad writing. Oh look, Dave Filoni forgot about Shin, another character in a Disney Star Wars show that they build and then they abandon. And it's the same thing with Balin as well. So rest in peace to Ray Stevenson. He had good screen presence here and some good moments and his character had potential, but they just probably whatever future they had in store for this character, they may have to recast, but just what they did here in this finale episode with him, they, they didn't use them well. They underused them. He couldn't be involved in some of the battles with Ahsoka and Ezra. They could have been a duel with him against Ezra. So it looks like Balin, it looks like these characters went to another galaxy and they arrived into Middle Earth. Dave Filoni is supposedly a Lord of the Rings fan, but it just looks so bad here. It looks like a copy and paste ripoff, and it just looks really odd, and it doesn't fit here in what is supposed to be Star Wars. Why didn't Thrawn contact Balin any time during this battle when he probably would have needed a dark, a dark side force user like him to fight against the Jedi here? It just doesn't make any sense. It's a waste of this character and using this actor here at your disposal when he was available. So this scene here has a lot of issues, but one of the most important things is not what is being shown here, but what wasn't shown. How did Ezra escape the Star Destroyer? We know that the Imperial ship arrived to Dathomir in the Star Wars galaxy, but how did he, well, how was he able to get out and escape a Star Destroyer filled with other Stormtroopers? I guess you could say it's because he had the, the, the Stormtrooper armor there, but at the same time, how was he able to escape and they didn't get TIE Fighter? How did the witches not sense Ezra on the ship with their magic force powers and everything like that it doesn't make any sense How, what this ship was supposed to also look like a Republic Jedi fighter what was it doing inside the Star Destroyer there's just a lot of questions there could have been like a whole episode of him just escaping that Star Destroyer uh, and then also it's just a little weird why is he coming out with the Stormtrooper armor if anything some of those New Republic officers probably would not have been hesitant and they would have just blasted that Stormtrooper oh it's a Stormtrooper kill him you know uh, so they waited it out and they had this moment I don't understand why he just didn't come out in his regular, in regular clothes and the scene just left you with a lot of plot holes on how he actually got there and probably the final sin that this episode could have done is just shove Anakin Skywalker there again, right in front of us again, try to save this show. Dave Filoni and Kathleen Kennedy and everybody were like, oh my God, this is really bad. We need to do something to like save the episode. So they just, oh, just shove Anakin Skywalker in there. Oh, that, that'll that make, that'll whet everybody's appetites. Everybody will love it. Dave Filoni and Kathleen Kennedy probably saw how bad this episode was, this finale was. And like, oh man, we need to save this. Just shove Anakin Skywalker there at the end and everybody will eat it up. It'll be a great episode, and the shills mostly are the ones that are gonna eat this up and give it a 10 out of 10. But another issue here is like, why, why is he, why is he there? Why, why, why haven't we seen anything in Disney Star Wars now post Return of the Jedi with him showing up to his son, Luke Skywalker? Why is he just so focused on Ahsoka? Why is Anakin Skywalker so focused on Ahsoka? Luke Skywalker is a more important character here trying to rebuild the Jedi Order and probably would want to have a conversation with his father, his Force Ghost father, but Lucasfilm doesn't want to tell us those stories they want to push the female forces female empowerment crap disingenuous stuff here and they want to use anakin skywalker as member berries to try to grab certain fans in, in in the fan base like oh look this is real star wars because the chosen ones here no it's just baloney you know and nothing against the actors hayden christensen i'm sure he was happy to play the role again but unfortunately he is in a really bad show a really bad script and uh it, in, in many ways like he is done more justice in the original 
original George Lucas movies than anything here. But of course, the shows are going to say that this is the best Star Wars since The Empire Strikes Back. It's just a bunch of baloney. And I'm glad that show's over. As, some, as somebody that's starting this channel, I do a theme park channel on another channel, and I have a full-time job. It was a just like a job in itself to do this here on this channel, do the reviews for every episode. And but I'm glad it's done, and I'm glad and I will I'm glad I expose all the just the crap that this is that Star Wars Disney Star Wars is because real Star Wars ended in 2005. Uh, whatever Disney has done with this, they don't care to do anything to follow George's story or to follow even his universe, to even respect the characters and the established lore, uh, in that universe. They don't care about any of that. And they want, instead of them adding new creative lore ideas and stories, they want to add agendas and ideologies here and identity politics here and feminist propaganda stuff here that if, if anything ruins the franchise and it just destroys its artistic uh integrity but and it makes it into something that's just an abomination of a thing and it, and at the same time because these people are so deep in all these ideologies and all this crap they lack any writing skills they lack any kind of understanding of storytelling and writing george lucas was uh, deep into like mythology storytelling into what he loved as a kid growing up movies saturday matinee serials and things like that he his mind was just enveloped with storytelling pure storytelling and that's why the original movies his original six movies feel like pure storytelling just pure storytelling an, an adulterated storytelling and that's why those are always going to be the best and that's what real star wars is this this show proves and it, it all proved it a long time ago with the sequels but as they keep moving forward you think okay we should give them we should hope for something better we should hope that it's going to get better we should hope that they're going to retcon the sequels and at this point they are not going to retcon anything this is all going to lead to the disney sequel they're adamant in doing this or losing money at galaxy's edge they close the star wars hotel because it's crap it's not real star wars they're losing money in the toy merchandise they're losing money at the theme parks as well and they're not getting any viewership out of their tv shows and their disney sequel uh, brand is not selling anything at all and you know people are leaving disney plus they don't care people left during mandalorian season three this franchise is this franchise is in a is in decay and it's all the fault of disney kathleen kennedy bob Iger, and the people they hire like dave filoni and the and the people and other people like him with these ideologies so this show was utter crap this episode was utter crap it was uh if you if you're if you're watching this review this video and you haven't seen the show and you're watching this out of curiosity if you want to know if you should watch it or not do not even waste your time if you want to watch the show it's just i'm letting you know now that it's not going to be the best use of your time you know there's watch the original movies read uh, some of the read some better eu novels and comic books better stories than any of this that is real star wars because this is going to be a waste of your time and uh it just proves that it that nobody is invested in this anymore with more viewers that they lose more fans that they lose and sooner or later this franchise is going to be tucked in some corner out there in the pop culture world and they'll be like you remember star wars oh yeah star wars it used to be great but yeah then it just kind of like died a long time ago yeah that would be cool if they made more and things like and they were actually good and it's going to be a long time if they continue down this track it's going to get to that point because it's it hasn't been as big as it used to be when it was uh, under George Lucas. So that's going to be my review. Let me know what you think. Uh, I will stay tuned for more video reviews on this channel, movie content, cinema content, and other Star Wars content. I want to add more content here that celebrates uh, and, and analyzes George Lucas' Star Wars movies, original six movies. I would love to do something where I kind of just uh, start off with the original movie, 1977, and I do a lot of videos where I do a lot of topics on that movie. And analyze aspects of that movie and then move on to the next one so i can build content on this channel so let me know what you think about this show in the comments for all the shows and haters you're welcome to comment as long as it's not personal i will leave your comment there but just know that you're helping this channel and this video in the meantime i'll see you guys next time and may the force be with you